segment. Now orthogonal means no diagonals. So wherever we place this, it can't attack a diagonal, but it can attack one space in a cross. So think of a knight's move, but only one space. So let me place this card down here real quick. So this goes on the blue. Um, I'm actually going to place it on the water tower here. No, scratch. I'm actually going to place this up on the factory. Now this makes it dangerous that some of these creatures could combine together and flip. But I'm not as worried about that right now because red is holding on to construction. You also have to remember that I do not know what the goal is of the game yet. There are three goals in the game. One of those three goals is randomly placing the deck here 15 cards away from the bottom. I have to complete the goal before 15 event cards come out. In some cases you just have to have a certain condition when the 15 cards run out. In other cases you have to complete it before they run out. So I'm not sure what it is yet. So I might need some enemies on the board because there are events that I need to actually get glued to split apart. Alright, Blue's going to move to the water tower, and he's going to generate a little bit of water here, because Gloop is thirsty, and I might need that later, we'll see. I'm not going to stockpile too much, because if the event comes up that I need to give him food and water, it's going to wipe them all off the board anyways. So it, could be, it might be a waste of an action. He's not close enough to any enemies to attack, and the other spaces around him just aren't that useful at the moment, so I think that's his best move. Alright, Red's turn. Event. All enemies move up. And a fuzzy comes out. Okay, this is our last fuzzy token. It says all three fuzzies are on the board. If another fuzzy card comes up, it doesn't come on the board. It just gets discarded. So that's a... Um, it's kind of a good thing and kind of a bad thing. It means we have a lot of monsters on the board. But at the same time, I'm going to place this one at the farm. At the same time, it saves us from having a whole bunch of the same monster out. So it doesn't hurt as bad. And I really don't like fuzzies, especially if glips start to break off. So red, I think he's just going to battle where he's standing. There are two enemies there, so I have a pretty good chance of rolling at least one of them and injuring them. But I roll neither. I roll a Morbit and a Strider, and neither of those are in that space. So, let's go on to Yellow turn. So let's go on to Yellow card. Okay, the goal is on top of the deck. So for Yellow's turn, all that comes out is the goal, and the goal does not attach to a player, so Yellow's not going to have a card attached to him. So let's see what we need to complete. Feast and Famine. Remove all food and water from the board. You must consume 10 food and 10 water before the event deck runs out. Your consumption of this is only in response to this card, so if I feed, if I give him water, our thirsty card will not go away. If I feed him, any hunger cards that come out won't go away. If Well, I could use it for the, the thirsty, or he could use it for this. Alright, so we're just going to place this. I'm just going to put it over here for now, off out of the way. Actually, let me clear space up here, and I'll just place it up here. That way you can see when I'm placing tokens on it. So, um, Yellow's already on Gloop at the start of the turn, so I'm going to give Gloop a food and put it onto the Feast of Famine. So I need to get 10 food and 10 water onto that card. Uh, next, Yellow gets to move. I'm going to move him up this direction, getting him over towards the food here where I can start spawning some food. Actually, I'm going to move him down this way instead because I want Gloop to start coming this direction and I want to kill off this fuzzy. So I'm attacking the fuzzy. Oh, these the water that was already here is gone at the start, it's, or when that card came out. So I do get a fuzzy and I get a wild, so I kill this fuzzy completely. So I'm gonna remove one of the, I'm gonna remove the fuzzy from the red player's card because he had more events on him. Alright, we got a blue event card. Alright, so they're all running this direction for enemies. So move him down here, these two up here, and we get another fungoid. Alright, uh, this is a good time, but I think I should get rid of some of these creatures. So, 
I'm going to take the Fungoid and place it where these other two are over here, which will allow me to kill a Fuzzy, a Fungoid, and the Tentacle Snake, which I really don't want to be out right now. Well, I don't want any of them out, really. But And remember, that's going to flip this tile, but Red's going to immediately play its construction and flip it back to its normal side. Blue is going to generate the water here. Plop two waters out. Actually, he gets to move first. He's going to move glip, or gloop down here, generate two water, and gloop will drink those two waters immediately. Red's turn. Event card. Strider. All enemies move down. Let's take the Strider and place him up there. So he's going to go there. Just because I don't want anything flipping right now, I don't have a way of unflipping anything. So he's going to come up to here, especially I don't want the reroll token to flip because that's one of the ways I can flip things. And red is going to generate two food. Blue's turn. Event. Earthquake. Alright, this one here is a bit different. We haven't seen this yet. Earthquake has no arrows. All monsters stay where they are. Any player tiles that I would have taken over, remember the player deck had... Let me show you one of these here. Remember the player deck has spaces that you can place onto the board. Now, you don't always get an Earthquake because we remove 10 cards from the event deck every game. But what Earthquake does is if I would have placed this on the board somewhere, Earthquake will remove it from the board. If a creature would go to a tile that has a player card on it, you discard the player card and the bottom tile is unaffected. So it gets rid of the card that's there, but protects your tile. And Earthquake is just going to get discarded because at the moment it does nothing. Uh, blue will generate two more water. So let's get two more water on here on the gloop. Uh, he wasn't going to move. He's fine where he's at. I am a little nervous about these two creatures being here. Alright, Red's turn. Alright, Playful. Red's getting a little full here. So we're going to put the Playful here, but all monsters move that direction. Fuzzy will move one. Fungoid will move two. Red is just going to generate more food over here. So when Gloop does eventually get up there, he'll have a lot of food. Yellow's turn. Event. Curiosity. So all monsters are going to move down. Uh, remember last turn the Strider couldn't move this way, so that's why he just stayed there. All monsters move down, Strider moves to the hotel. Gloop wants to get to the library. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Yellow will give Gloop a food, and then his activation he will use the two waters to give Gloop two more water tokens. So we got two, four, six water and two food so far. We're doing pretty good actually. We might actually defeat this goal. I haven't beat this goal yet, so this will be exciting if I do. Alright, next turn. Very tempted to get blue to that reroll token just because I'm worried something's gonna flip. Alright, blue's turn. I really want to get blue to that reroll token because I'm scared something's gonna flip, but at the same time I really need to keep going with what we've been doing with Gloop. Ooh, a tentacle snake. Error this way first. And, uh, oh, we really don't want that food to flip up there. So I think the reroll token might be our best bet at the moment. The tentacle snake, I'm actually going to put up into the scrapyard. It might be a little risky having it there. But I don't want it up along here in case they just keep coming this way. Uh, blue will give two more water. So we're up to two, four, six, eight. So two more water, and we should have him completely water-filled. He'll be happy. All right, red is almost completely filled. So let's see what comes up next for red. Curiosity. All right, so at least there's a curiosity on there. Unfortunately, Gloop is nowhere near where he needs to get for this curiosity. So they want him to go up here to the drainage pipe. Almost is going to move that direction, which makes me a little relieved being that they're leaving the food alone at the moment. Uh, Red will... Red will put two more food out here. I think that's all the food I need to generate. I think yellow can feed up the rest of the way. We are counter limited. So there's only two food and two water left out here. 
once they're all in the card, we can't use them anymore. Remember, Yellow doesn't actually use the tokens, so that he can still get rid of Thirsties and Hungers. But Gloom's going to start getting hit on Red's turn now, because Red's completely filled up. And I don't see a way that we're going to clear those up anytime soon. Alright, Yellow's turn. Yellow's going to feed Gloop. And then, for his action, he's going to give him the last two water that Gloop needs. So now we're just going to have to start moving Gloop up towards the factory, and we should have this one beat. So let's keep our fingers crossed that everything works right. And nothing surprising pops out and really messes us up. Alright, Blue's turn. Blue gets a hunger with the arrow going that way. So, the tentacle snake moves up, the fuzzy moves up, now the creatures are really starting to combine together. If the creatures move this direction, it's going to kill our factory. Fortunately for us, the food will stay if the tile flips. And we don't really need to use the factory again, so that's not that big of a deal. Actually, I wouldn't mind if that happened. I also wouldn't mind if they go that way. If they combine together, it's going to clear up a lot of stuff, and it's going to be very good for us. So for Blue's movement, he is going to move Gloop to the farm, because we need to now get Gloop up to the factory. Alright, Red's turn. Alright, event card comes out for Red. We still follow the arrow on it. Now all creatures move that direction. Now we have a choice. Three of the creatures are going to die. It's going to be two of them that's on the space of the drainage pipe. So these two are definitely dead. But we get to choose which one of these monsters move first. I would rather the Fuzzy be gone because he can pull Gloops away. I mean, he can pull Glips away, and there is going to be a Glip split off of Gloop at this point because he's going to get hit from Red having a full board. So I'm going to move the Fuzzy up here. Actually, no, this is interesting because I can actually clear part of Red's board with this flipping the tile because we can kill some of the creatures that are on red. So if we look at red, so let's look at red here. The three creatures that just went together is a fuzzy, a tentacle snake, and a fungoid. So I'm gonna take the fungoid off of red and discard it and get rid of the token. I'm gonna take, well the fuzzy's gonna come from yellow because that's the only person that has a fuzzy. And the tentacle snakes that come from blue because he's the only one with a tentacle snake. And now we have room to place the fuzzy here. And it's going to place the fuzzy on the board somewhere. I'm going to put it in the bottom corner here in the sewer. Notice I flipped the tile here and I put the fuzzy down here in the corner of the sewer. Red's going to put the last food out here. That's all he can do. Yellow's turn. Event. Fungoid. All monsters move that direction. I'm going to place the fungoid up here in the scrapyard because I don't care where he is at this moment because as soon as his turn comes up I move him over here. We eat all the food and we win. So we just won. First time I defeated that goal. So I hope everybody enjoyed how Gloop plays. I think this game is about done. I don't know of any other changes I really want to make. Any suggestions I'm welcome to take. But as is, I think it plays really well. Uh, it's a lot harder with less players. Uh, Yellow's ability is really the most powerful, I think. But I've been in cases where Red's ability or Blue's ability saved me, and without it I would have lost. So I think all the abilities have their uses. When that event comes up, yellow is definitely the one to have. Reds is the one to have whenever the, the combat one comes up when Gloop has to actually fight stuff.